arcade in it. So what I did was I started off by going to Google Images and I found a profile of an arcade cabinet. There's a lot of them out there, so use whichever one you like. Um, so what I like to do is I want to go ahead and um, let's put this at zero, zero, zero. Um, you don't have to do it, but I just like working off with this, working with a square object. Um, and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and freeze this reference image, image so it doesn't affect our modeling. So I'm gonna go ahead and say freeze in my object properties panel, um, uncheck by layer, and make sure that it doesn't say show frozen in gray. Um, we wanna make sure that we see that image. So uh, my image not, is not moving around now. So next I'm gonna go to my lines. Um, I'm gonna turn on my snaps toggle, which will allow me to control um, where my cursor is. And I'm gonna start mapping out the profile of this game machine. Now, don't worry if the lines aren't lining up just how you want. Uh, we're going to adjust them in just a second. So I'll close my spline there. I'll turn off my snaps. Um, I will unfreeze my reference image and I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete it. So uh, before I delete it, let's do some adjusting first. So once we have our plane selected, I can go into my vertex mode and I can start to move around some of these vertices. And feel free to use your creative license here and map them out however you want. So move this one a little bit tighter. Um, this is fine like this. And so far that looks pretty good to me. All right. So if you notice in here, we have a couple of areas that are a little bit rounded. So we have a rounded area here, we have one right here, and there are some areas up here, and um, it's kind of hard to see because the vertices are in the way, where those edges are also rounded. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add something called a fillet. Um, and let's go ahead and do that for these three vertices here. So under your line selection with your vertex sub-object mode selected, you're gonna go down here to fill it, and you can just click and d hold and drag um, to get a nice little fill it here. And that will give you a nice rounded edge. So four looks about good. Um, if you wanna do less, that's fine. And let's add a fill it here as well. Um, so if you have a little bit less. Let's maybe do two. Let's see how that looks. All right, cool, I like that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my reference image, and that is the profile that I'm gonna be working with for my arcade machine. So what we wanna do is we wanna add some thickness to this object. So I'm gonna go ahead to my modify panel and add the extrude modifier. And you're gonna notice that it's, if you don't have an amount automatically in there, it's like a flat piece of paper. So you have to make sure that you bump up this amount to, let's say two. Um, and that looks pretty good to me. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and hold on my shift key and make a copy for the other side. Um, we can go ahead and make it a copy since we're gonna attach them in a second. And that's gonna be the width of my arcade machine. Now, you can adjust that width here, um, but you can also do it later if you want. So once I have that down, um, I'm going to right click and convert one side to an editable poly. And I'll go down here to attach, and I'll attach the opposite side. So now those move as one, which is pretty great. So to start modeling the uh, actual physical shape of this arcade machine, I'm gonna go to my polygon selection, and I am going to hold on my control key and select both inner sides there. Um, and I wanna do something called inset. And inset allows me to increase this polygon amount, so it'll give me like a little bridge um, in between the outside. And I think this profile just looks nice. So I'm um, gonna take this like 1.5, just to work with round numbers and say, okay. And with those polygons still selected, um, I'm gonna go down here to bridge and they will get bridged together. And that is the um, start of your cabinet. So what you can do at this point is you can take your vertices and you can drag them in or out. Um, you can make it as wide or as skinny as you want. That's entirely up to you. 
So let's start modeling the inner area here where our games are actually going to take place. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm actually going to hold down shift and make a copy of this first screen. And this is going to be the glass and we'll use that a little bit later on. So you want to clone to an object and we'll name that glass and say okay. And for now we're just going to go ahead and right click and say hide selection. But for this we want to map out where um, the screen where the gameplay takes place is actually going to be. So it's not quite this wide. So what I want you to do is we're going to select all of these edges here. Now either you can do the marquee selection like I just did which selects all the edges in front and in back. Or another really easy thing to do is to click on an edge, say ring, and that does the same thing. Um, so from here what you're going to do is you're going to go down here to the connect tool and if you notice, that makes a vertical line. So we're going to go ahead and make two segments here. And we're going to use a second area. And we're going to pinch that out to right about there. So like about 63. And we'll say OK. And the reason why we did that is because we now have this really nice area in here where we can start making our game screen. So I'm going to go ahead and inset this again just to make a nice little separation. And let's use the type in tool. Um, and let's inset that about two. That looks good. And we're going to oops, say OK. And then we can extrude this in a negative direction um, just a little bit. Let's do like maybe negative 17. Uh, I think that's too much. Let's maybe negative 10. Cool. Um, I don't even know if I like that. Let's do a little less. Negative five. I like that. And then um, let's go ahead and select and scale in all three ways. And we get a nice little bevel there. So you can see that nice edge that comes up. Um, it doesn't have to be too drastic, but just to give it a little bit of separation. So now from here, um, we're going to go ahead and model the domed screen that's going to be right in this area. So what you're going to, uh, and you know what? I'm going to take a few steps back because I don't like something that I did. Before you do anything here, let's take this entire area, and I'm sorry to do this, um, and let's go ahead and extrude this back just a little bit. Um, to go along with the type in tool, you can just do negative four in that direction um, just to offset that from the surface a little bit. And then we can do the same thing here. So I'll go ahead and be consistent with my type in. Um, we said it will inset this too. And then we will shoot. Say okay. And then we'll do an extrude in the negative direction about four. You see it remembers all of our options and we can select and scale that. So hopefully that wasn't too big of a hassle for you guys. All right, so now we're going to make the domed screen. So I'm going to go back to my um, select tool and I'm going to hold down my shift key and just bring out that object um, and let's call this screen. Say OK. All right, so now you're going to notice that this is an entirely separate object. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just change my color here. And we want to make this a curved surface. So first things first, um, it's already an editable poly. So I'm going to go to my edge tool. I'm going to select my horizontal edges using my marquee selection. Or you can do a uh, ring like you learned before. And we're going to go down to our connect tool, make sure our pinch is at zero. Um, and let's add four segments here. So let's do that say OK. And then if you select all the vertical lines and say connect, we'll do another four segments and say OK. Perfect. So what we want to start doing at this point is we're going to start to make this a dome because we don't want just a flat screen. So what you can do is you can start selecting some of these polygons and you can start dragging them out. But if you notice, as I'm dragging them out, they're kind of dragging downwards. And that's because our reference system is set to our view, um, our standard X, Y, and Z. What we want to do is we want to change our reference coordinate system. Um, to local. 
So we're going to go up here to this tab, our reference coordinate system, and change this to local. And you'll see that our gizmo shifts with the orientation of our object. So if we drag this out, you'll see that it looks a little bit better here. I think it looks better at least. Let's drag out this middle one to get that nice shape there. Beautiful. And then let's do that in this direction. Bring that out just a tad. And then let's get this middle strip just to make that piece rounded out. Cool. So once we have that down, um, let's go to our viewport. And we're going to change our, um, our gizmo here to make sure it's centered with our object. So we're going to go to our hierarchy panel, say effect pivot only, center to object, and then turn off our effect pivot, and then we can move it freely around here. So what I want to do at this point is I'm actually going to drag it right in. Um, and as you can see, it doesn't fit super well. I have a couple little gaps on either side. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our um, select and scale tool, and we can just bring that right in. If you need to move it back a little bit, that's cool. And what I'm noticing here is that some of these sides are sh peeking through. So um, you can always go back into your polygon mode. And you can just bring these out just a little bit. I must have made my dome a little bit too much, which is okay. Okay, that looks good. All right, that looks great. And so, as you can see, um, this is now just like kind of nicely nestled in there. Um, I could probably scale it just a little bit more to get rid of some of these areas here. And that looks like a good uniform screen. So in the next tutorial, um, we'll go over how to make some buttons and the joysticks and go ahead and add on the screen. Um, go ahead and stay tuned for the next tutorial. Thank you.